Welcome to Tile Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Heal. What's up, guys? Two weeks ago, we fixed The Force Awakens. Last week, we fixed The Last Jedi. And today, we're back to fix The Rise of Skywalker. Or so we thought. Yeah. Yeah. Turns it ain't out, possible. I'm just kidding. Turns out you can't, Todd. <laughs> turns out you just can't. Uh, Todd, you know, I wondered how far we could take this premise uh, when I when we first kind of set out to do to fix The Force Awakens, right. to fix The Last Jedi, fix The Rise of Skywalker. Turns out. It's right here. It's as far as you can <laughs> take it. We've reached the end of the line. Yeah, uh, yeah. With the rise of Skywalker, um, we'll, we'll get into why you it, you can't really fix this as 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 you can't fix the other two and then fix this one because it's such a pivot. It's such an absolute right. like reaction to what's come before and a complete pivot. But I, I have something I want to share here with you, Todd, um, about how I think the the kind of genesis of how the rise of Skywalker kind of came to be. Okay. I have a little scene that I've kind of mapped out for you how I think it went. Okay. Inside the, the headquarters of Disney Lucasfilm. Okay. So if you'll indulge me here for this a second. This is good. I'm ready. Yeah, because the people behind this film, they were so like singularly focused on undo undoing everything that was done in The Last Jedi, right? Like that they were so focused on that that this film never had a chance of being good. Right. That That's one of the, pro the problems. Ryan Johnson, uh, he took what was set up in The Force Awakens, chopped it up, fed it to a Wookiee, and then that Wookiee left a steaming pile of Wookiee shit on the floor called The Last Jedi. <laughs> okay, uh, and then and then you had Colin Trevorrow. He walked in and was like, uh, "Here's how I would turn that pile of shit on the floor into a third film." And Disney Lucasfilm was like, "No thanks." And so they fired Colin Trevorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Disney Lucasfilm they called up J.J. Abrams and they're like, "Hey, have you seen the pile of Wookie shit we have on the floor over here?" And JJ <laughs> and JJ is like, "Yeah, I seen it. I seen it." And Disney Lucasfilm says, "Can you can you do anything with that?" JJ, can you do anything with it? So JJ comes in, he looks at the pile of shit on the floor, and he goes, hmm, hmm. And instead of doing a sensible thing and saying, it's unfortunate that we've been left this pile of shit on the floor, but let's make the best of it and see if we can put on some gloves, mm -hmm. go through this pile of shit, mm. <laughs> and, uh, and find a way to continue the story based on using what's left inside of this pile of shit. Maybe we can pick out a few things, mm -hmm. go through it, and find something to make a third film out of. Yeah. And uh, But instead of that, J.J. just says, what if we ignore it? Okay, McKinney's like, what? <laughs> so what? what? If we just, what if we just ignore the pile of shit on the floor? It's not there. It's not there. And uh, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, maybe she's like looking up for updating her resume. She's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, JJ? And, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> she's getting ready to hit the send on her application to Warner Brothers. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's like, how do we just ignore that giant pile of shit on the floor? Like, Snoke's dead, JJ. We don't really have a main villain for our, our last film. And JJ says, we ignore it. We, we pretend it's not there. We say, we say, fuck the pile of shit on the floor. And we spend half to maybe three quarters of our next movie just completely setting things back to the way we want them. Yeah. And Kathleen Kennedy, she, again, she's like, but JJ, we, we, again, we still, we don't have a main villain. Like, what are we, what are we going to do? And JJ's like, hmm. And then maybe in a moment of inspiration, he looks at her. Somehow Palpatine has returned. Yes. Rise of Skywalker. We've brought back everybody else but the kitchen sink. And, Why and, not? And that to me is how you got the Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. And yeah, and it's again, it's such a reaction to The Last Jedi. Again, Brian John or not but uh JJ Esmond comes in, sets up the Force Awakens for better or worse. This is the direction we're going in. We don't have three lock scripts. Here's your direction. Ron Johnson says, comes in, and I don't like any of this shit. Uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> raising nobody. I don't care who Snokey is. We'll destroy all this. Let's tear the Jedi down. All this kind of stuff. J.J. Abrams comes back in and is like, I know this is not what I wanted. This is not what we're, we're going to completely spend three quarters of our movie undoing everything that Ryan Johnson just did instead of moving the plot forward and picking out elements that we could like potentially tweak or make work mm -hmm. or go with what's kind of been set up with, you know, seemingly Kylo Ren as being your big bad, big, big bad of your next film and the relationship between him and Ray. No, we're going to bring back Palpatine. We're going to undo the OG trilogy. We're going to say Palpatine lived or he, or that was a clone on the Death Star. And Palpatine's always been on Exegol. And he's like this ancient, ancient, ancient Sith. And we're going to bring that back. We're going to say, fuck the OG trilogy and fuck Ryan Johnson. <laughs> and that is the rise of Skywalker. And to try to fix that, you can't. Because you can, you can set things up and fix them kind of as we have done with The Force Awakens and mm -hmm. tweak. And again, we had the rule of characters still need to be in the same place at the end of the film 
in our version as they were in the actual film. Yeah. So in that baseline, you can fix them and set things up. But then when you get to this film and they're like introducing new characters and like taking things back that you just set up in in Last Jedi and yeah. like undoing all of it, you can't fix it. It's in pu- in fucking possible right. to fix this film yeah. in the way in which we intended to. So, Todd, we still need to salvage this video somehow. Ooh. So, uh, I'll ask you, give us a bit of a recap on what you fixed in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and tell us what you would have done with The Rise of Skywalker based on uh, those changes and how you set things up. What would your Rise of Skywalker look like if we're going based on how you changed The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi? So uh, just to recap uh, and to backpedal on myself here, because I, th- I think, you know, I did go outside the boundaries when I tried to push. <laughs> broke the rules many times. Many times when I tried to push Finn as my main and right. put Ray, you know, kind of maybe. Which, again, to be clear, is a good idea. Yeah. It's just like we tried to, like, you know, not change things drastically. We can't, you know, we couldn't, like, say Han Solo lived or Luke lived to the end of you know Last Jedi kind of thing. Like we just right. we tried to have some framework to it to kind of keep us not going crazy. So I think uh you know I think we're gonna I'm gonna keep Ray as the main. She's just not as nerfed up. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know and Force Awakens, you know, she's taking her lumps. She's struggling, you know. Maybe by the end she just like you kind of, I think you kinda of mentioned she barely gets through that fight with Kylo. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we introduced Han and Chewie in a better way. I think I had them maybe coming to talk to that guy that was bartering all them little the one quarter portion guy. Yeah, the one quarter portion guy. You know, maybe he's you know you know trying to get a bounty you know from him or getting paid for a bounty or maybe he found out the Falcon was there and he's there to claim it. You know, I think my biggest one was I think you know that instead of Luke being on that. Uh, planet he was on in exile that you know the first order had him all along mm-hmm. he was their captive mm-hmm. you know i think where i really struggled going into the last jedi i really feel like i let you down because <laughs> i had nothing <laughs> <laughs> trust me it took me a long it yeah. took me all week to figure out what i would do with it so you talk about you talk about pulling the weight on the video this man right here <laughs> But I think, you know, going into Less Jedi, I think, you know, I think Ray, I mean, Ray kind of maybe begins her training with Luke, but mm-hmm. Luke is very, you know, kind of hesitant, you know, because of his failure with Ben Solo. He's still carrying that baggage. You know, I think a lot of that movie, to me, still kind of plays out. You know, I think, you know, the Snoke kind of influencing Ray through, you know, those visions she's seen of being close with Kylo, mm. you know, to the point where she actually takes the Falcon and leaves and goes to that ship. You know, I still like the turn where uh, Kylo kills Snoke. Mm-hmm. I think maybe that can be more of maybe him not turning to the light side or anything, but, you know, seeing or having visions that him and Ray can be a more powerful force than just him and Snoke or Snoke in general could ever be. So mm-hmm. that's why he takes him down. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, then he offers Ray the chance to come over. And, you know, right as that's happening, I think that's when, the, you know, the old, the old hyperspeed or light speed split mm-hmm. through that main the ship. The holdo maneuver, yeah, as the, it's called yeah, here. That happens. That's how Ray gets away. And I think most of the stuff that happens on the, what was the salt planet? Crate. Crate. I think that kind of still, <laughs> that still kind of plays out as it did, you know, Luke's kind of on that, you know, his X-Wing was there, but I think it kind of sets him up maybe as a more powerful Jedi that he does does that, do what he does remotely. Mm. You know, he has his little, you know, battle with Kylo, but it's more of not adversarial, but more regret and remorse. You know, I couldn't save you. I couldn't, you know, I failed you. Yep. But Ray can maybe kind right. of thing. And I think at the end where Ray kind of moves all those rocks to kind of get everybody out, I think that's maybe her biggest force thing she's done so far in my version. Right. And then we roll right on into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're kind of setting up here. I mean, again, we didn't really change a lot of stuff. It's mostly characterization and mostly yeah. tweaking things to, like, show them in a better light or, like, make them make more sense. Like, we're not – we didn't make major changes. Like, yeah. we could still go into this, but then – Again, actual Rise of Skywalker is like, no, 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 no. Like, Ray has to be somebody. We have to have a big bad. So you're kind of setting up kind of similar to me. Like, yeah. um, you're kind of setting up what Luke as Force Ghost. Yes. Kind of training Ray, kind of helping her guide her along. 
Uh, what else you got for Rise of Skywalker? Anything else that you got here? No, I really, I really tried to get back on track with this because I say I felt like I let you down last <laughs> time. But man, this was a struggle. I know, I know, yeah. Because we try to get what is it, the Exitol, that stuff that kills Exigol. dogs, that's in sugar free gum. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Exegol. Exegol. Uh, not the thing that kills dogs. Because <laughs> I don't really care for that, you know, the triangle wayfinder shit. Yeah, MacGuffin. Uh, yeah, the MacGuffin. And that, then you, you need know, a that, blade MacGuffin to yeah. find that MacGuffin. Yeah, that Kylo's got to have one, and then our, the resistance has got to find one to find the place. And then that's all in service to just setting up Palpatine anyway. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't think either one of us would have Palpatine come back in our version, right? Or yeah, do that, you? that was the real struggle is I get Palpatine completely out of this. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's got, just got to be Kylo, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. And the Knights of Ren, potentially. Set Knight, them up as a bigger threat than they I are. I can have the Knights of Ren being more involved. Maybe that opening scene where he's doing that battling. Maybe he, uh, Kylo's already on Exegol and he's going through more intense training with the Knights of Ren. Maybe Exegol has been around, you know, I think it's been around all along, right. but it, you don't need like that, maybe that Wayfinder to find it. But mm. then I'm like, well, how the fuck does the Resistance find it? That's where I'm struggling. Mm, force connection between her and Kylo? That could still be working, yeah. Yeah, maybe she, she figures out somehow, like she can just sense her way to him. Who cares at this yeah. point? Like, <laughs> you know, you can... You can throw something at the wall and make it better than, than what they've yeah. got here, which is just Ray leaving, like, breadcrumbs to Exegol anyway. But I think anywhere where you've got the Emperor in this, you know, I've got Kylo is my main bad. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with having somebody be a total villain, just a total villain through and through, right. all the way to the end. You know, I, I'm sorry that he was a Solo. I'm sorry that he was Leia <laughs> and Han's son, but right. this guy is bad. He's just a bad seed all the way to the end to me. Right. Yeah, I think, too, I mean, it's not, again, since we're, we're kind of, like, trying to, you know, salvage what we can out of this. Like, I guess if you if you go through, and I'm just kind of thinking of this now, so I don't want to throw you a curveball, but it okay. might be. But, like, if, you, if we're doing just Kylo as our main bad, and I, I agree with that, and I think a lot of people have, like, kind of agreed with that. Like, is there any other motivation that you would have for him other than just being – like, what is his motivation just to, like, is he going to make another super weapon? Is he just going to create more Sith and, like, rise up? Or, like, like I, I guess that's what, like, everybody always says, and I haven't really heard many people present the idea of, like, Kylo's your big bad, and we like the idea of, like, either him and Ray going off. I think that's one possibility. Like I said, like, maybe the third movie is him and Ray. Um, she does take his hand at the beginning of the third movie, like you in the last mm -hmm. Jedi on a cliffhanger of like, join me. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the third movie she does and she tries it, but she sees, maybe she thinks that she could like together. She's, she's on the light. He's on the dark. Maybe they make a gray and maybe right. they could kind of rule that way. But she sees that his darkness continues to like overpower and he still makes dark decisions. Right. And then that causes the kind of strife and kind of conflict between them in the third movie and their separation. And like we, Kylo is, you know, he's fallen too far. He's irredeemable. Maybe he does something else. Maybe he kills Leia. Finally goes through with killing Leia right. in the third movie and becomes irredeemable in her eyes. And going through. But, I mean, is there any other motivation you would have for Kylo? Because I hear a lot of people say Kylo should be your big bad in, in the third movie, which I agree with you on. Mm -hmm. But, like, I didn't even really think about it now. Like, what's his motivation if you don't do something like that with him and Ray trying to, like, run things? Like, is he just rebuilding the Sith? Does he want to make another Death Star? What do you think? Is he infatuated with her? Is he in love with her? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And I mean, I kind of, and I thought about something too, and it kind of really circumvented what I had, but went kind of more with what you had with like, you know, the uh, Starkiller base from Force, was it Starkiller base mm -hmm. from Force Awakens, you know, being stolen from the Resistance mm -hmm. and the First Order being the smaller, mm -hmm. they're trying to get back on their feet. They're trying to rebuild the Galactic Empire. They're the smaller faction. Right. And maybe Exegol is like their their final base, their, their only thing they've got. And they're trying to, everything they've got, everything they got is left there. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's trying to do, you know, like his intense training under the Knights of Ren. He's trying to become the most powerful Sith ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. ever. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could say, like, that's where maybe Palpatine back in the days of the Empire had staged the creation of there. Maybe Exegol is like their, their staging ground where they did create all the Star Destroyers, not that he like conjured them out of nowhere. Right. But maybe that's the place where they built all their 
their ships and machines of war. And maybe Kylo's like, he wants to go to Exegol with the Knights of Ren and the, the people he has left in the First Order to like get the all, all the remnants, like get all the old Star Destroyers, get all everything that they have to throw at the Republic or the rest of the galaxy kind of thing. Yeah, or maybe you could even throw in something. I don't know if this totally breaks for Sith logic, <laughs> but maybe Exegol is like maybe this focal point in, you know, uh, the Sith's energy, their power, their being. Mm. Exegol is like their, I don't know, holy mecca or something. Mm. And Kylo thinks if he goes there and goes through some kind of trials with the Knights of Ren and he somehow becomes, you know, powerful more powerful than any sith has ever been but it drives him totally f- fucking bonkers mad maybe at that point he doesn't need any kind of motivation he's yeah. just resistance he's guy. infused with the ethos, essence yeah. of the sith basically right. yeah i mean and i'm here I mean, I'm, I'm on the fly spitball no, I, mean, I, I, I agree like i think you know again of the two routes you go it's either kylo ren big bad not with ray or again the idea of like maybe they start out together and they try to like maybe kind of build this new new Jedi order of neutrally gray, but he's still falling too much. So I feel like you have two options there, but like, you know, of the options that you go with, like you could, you could easily ride it to, like you said, if it's just Kylo Mm -hmm. and it's not a situation where she joins it for any time, like you could have him do any of that. You could have him go get all the old, the classic stuff, go to Exegol for training, find the essence of the Sith, become more powerful. He, you know, Star Wars is, you know, you don't, what was ever the motivation of the emperor? He was just bad. He was yeah. just bad for bad sake. So, like, again, I'm not so concerned so much with that. I was just wanting to, you know, kind of spitball, like, what his inspiration could be. So, like, any of that stuff I think you could easily do. But yeah. the fact of it is, is, like, why would you bring back the emperor? Why would yeah. you undercut the OG trilogy and and bring back that character and completely just shit all over that for no reason. And I think the thing for me is is the how the way he was brought back. I mean, if you think about it, they withhold Luke to the very end of Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. We don't get Han and Chewie to what, maybe like 40, 34, 5 minutes into Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe it could have been, I don't know, better if they maybe it was like this kind of hush-hush thing nobody really knew. It was like one of those things that's filmed under a secret title because we're bringing back the Emperor. (laughs) Right. But I mean, like when the first 10 minutes, Poe's like, we're fucked. The Emperor's back. Yeah, and (laughs) and that's all you get for like how did he come back and the explanation is just Poe just saying somehow Palpatine is returned. Yeah. We got a a secret spy message that says somehow Palpatine is returned. Right. And that's it. They're like, look over here. Look over here. And now Palpatine's back. And Hux as a spy, I just don't. I that seems like that. they've written themselves into a, a corner of like, well, we have Poe and uh, Finn captured. How do we get them back out of here? Uh, oh, make Ho- make Hux a spy, <laughs> right? And then we'll go back and we'll film a scene earlier, and we'll we'll have some kind of uh, weird uh, alien dude uh, say that there's a spy in the first order, and we'll make it Hux, and he'll get him off the ship. It seems like somebody wrote themselves in a right. corner, uh, and that was their way out of it. Like, makes no sense. Uh, uh, the way that character's been set up and depicted, and I know his motivation is supposed to be like, I don't care about the resistance if the resistance wins. I want Kylo Ren to lose. I don't buy. It. I don't buy that as motivation yeah. enough to be a spy to risk all he risks to uh, to help out the resistance just so Kylo Ren would, would lose. And um, they kind of go out of the way to make you think it's that other general guy because right. when, when they're talking about the spy, he kind of steps back and you can see his eyes kind of lit up. <laughs> oh, it's that guy, right. obviously. Yeah, I'm nah, just, way to go, JJ. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, for for just to kind of recap some of my stuff, um, you know, I kind of set up that between uh, between Return of the Jedi and the Force Awakens, Republic kind of created that super web of their own Mm -hmm. you know leia your former resistance general now more politician you know kind of protested its creation and so on first order kind of came to power by kind of seizing control of the republic super weapon you know kind of many joined the force the first order out of of fear is how i would kind of say it yeah and then ray again i met her from space montana she's like a hunter that's right capable fighter uh capable piloting small aircraft yes not millennium falcon size uh finn i left him pretty much the same former stormtrooper uh give him a mechanical background so ray's not you know super mechanical piloty girl right uh he's much more capable and he's a friend of ray he's not in love with ray right again that's the problem with this fucking movie he's just a lost puppy the whole time yes like and that's it's what he's been mostly for the whole three films uh poe is basically unchanged in my version of the force awakens uh, after the fall of the Empire and his son turning to the dark side, Han Solo returned to his life of smuggling. 
Uh, Kylo Ren and Snoke are mostly unchanged in my version of TFA. Mask Kanata, who's not a little yellow, but whole eyed CGI <laughs> creature. She gives Ray a random lightsaber from a Jedi. Uh, her family sheltered during Order 66. I thought about it. I like that better than it being Luke's lightsaber. Okay. Han Solo dies the same way he does in TFA. Uh, the Resistance takes out, I think we both kind of had this, the Resistance takes out Starkiller Base with a ground assault. Yeah. And uh, kind of lose, and, and that's another way I thought you could write it, is they lose a considerable number of their forces in doing so. That's why in The Last Jedi they're down to 400 or whatever, because mm -hmm. they had to do a ground assault, but not another Death Star trench run. Uh, I had it where Ray stole back the portion of the map the First Order had from the Empire for Luke Skywalker, uh, along with the portion inside BB-8. The map to Luke is basically complete. Uh, Ray seeks out Luke. Luke refuses to train her. Luke is in exile because he chose to abandon Ben Solo out of fear when he sensed the darkness and power within him. Ben Solo, who already had Snoke trying to influence his mind, seeks out Snoke, then returns to Luke's Jedi Temple with the Knights of Ren to destroy it. The resistance in the First Order slow speed chase is tweaked just to make it better, but it's still basically there. Yeah. Snoke dies in a similar but better way in my version. Uh, I keep Ray's parents being nobody. Yeah, that's uh, a must. And the end of My Last Jedi was tweaked, but plays out mostly the same with Kylo Ren as our main villain for Rise of Skywalker, which it wouldn't be called Rise of Skywalker. I don't know what you call it. Um, <laughs> Rise of the Jedi, I don't know. Uh, some, Sith Rising. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Luke is one with the Force and will return to train Ray as a Force ghost. And that's what I was kind of setting up as Luke comes back as a Force ghost. Kylo, I, I would go in the... the for like Rise of Skywalker just to kind of like make it a little bit more dynamic is have Ray and Kylo team up for a little bit and try to run the first order. Again, I'll end the last Jedi with him sticking out his hand mm -hmm. in, in the start of it. Maybe she, we don't, we don't maybe start right there. Maybe we start that she's, she's joined up with him. They're trying to create this new neutrally kind of gray, uh, morally gray Jedi order or something like that. But mm -hmm. again, he's fallen too far. Uh, maybe in his, as he falls again and they separate, he ends up killing Leia that's what makes him irredeemable, maybe gives him a little bit more power. Throw in some of the stuff that you got. Maybe he does go to Exegol for whatever reason, finds uh, even more dark, you know, dark Sith power or yeah. teachings of the Sith or mm -hmm. something like that. And, uh, you know, he's just our big bad, and that's all you really need. And Luke's around as a Force ghost training her. Leia, she'd still have to die because obviously that character passed away. And um, not character, but uh, the actress passed away. Right. The character Fisher passed away, and we, we lose that character as well. And that's pretty much what you do. And, I mean, you can set it up to have some kind of big fight, obviously, with the First Order, like, ships and things like that that Kylo still has. Or maybe he goes and gets some of the old star, the you know, Emperor starships or whatever. Um, but you can have that big fight at the end if you need it to give Rey something to do while her and Kylo are fighting, and that's all you need. Right. You didn't need... Wayfinders, you didn't need daggers, you didn't need uh, space Mardi Gras planets, and which let actually let's let's just go on. We're we gonna use, start shitting on yeah, it. Yeah, let's. This let's kid. I, I wrote down some <laughs> topics. Let's just either let's shit on or discuss some of these things, Todd, and okay. uh, we'll go through it here. And uh, what do you think of actual stuff that's done in the film? Palpatine creating Snoke. Uh, Palpatine's not even in this movie in my in my yeah. in my in my yeah. vision, so I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, e even even in, with him being in the in the film, I, I still think it's like it's dumb. Snoke could have just still been Snoke. Like it's just it's that's one of those. Here's our first like fuck you, Ryan Johnson. Right, that's <laughs> right. that's our first one of those. Uh, the idea of light speed skipping, it just totally. Uh, undermines everything that light speed is because yeah. if you go back to I think it's the original Star Wars where they're kind of getting attacked and I think I don't quote me exactly here but Han says something like it's going to take a few seconds to get the things like from they have a computer yeah. it's like you know if we don't we're going to hop into this or hop into that and we have a real big mess or something like right. that you can't do shit like yeah, this yeah I agree <laughs> I don't it looks cool and I get mm -hmm. posed supposed to be this badass pilot but I don't yeah you don't I, light speed I think skip. it breaks too much of the lore too um Leia training Ray instead of Luke. I'm not really buying that. And either. also Leia being secretly trained by Luke. That I could maybe see a little bit. I don't know. Uh, Luke kind of looked okay, but that younger Leia, <laughs> Young looked Leia? really bad. Yeah, <laughs> it looked, she looked Rogue One mm, bad. Yeah. It's like let's just take this character model from Rogue One and put it into this film. Um, just a note here. I had someone just, I guess, welded Luke's lightsaber back together. Somebody's <laughs> over there. We're like, I got it. Like flips her helmet down. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Kylo Ren rebuilding his helmet. Here's another one of like, fuck you, Ryan Johnson. I want him to have a helmet on. Right. What did you think of that? I mean, it looked cool with that kind of little red stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really mind it per se. Uh, what did you think about bringing Lando back? Hey, why not? I liked it. I think the two <laughs> moments or a couple moments that I actually like enjoyed. One was like the return of Lando and just like, they'd be like, you know, whatever. How'd you know it was us? And be like, Wookiee stand out in a crowd or whatever. I thought it was a good little moment with Lando. Mm -hmm. And he has a good little moment when he kind of returns with the the uh, the fleet of, you know, Republic citizens and ships and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that was kind of a good good moment. What do you think of Finn wanting to tell Ray something and never telling her? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why would you write that and then just be like, nah, we're nah. never going to go into it. I mean, I, I guess where he left us be like, Obviously, he's going to tell her he loves her or something, right? But like, exactly. Why would you do that? Why and she would... even brings it up, and he still won't say it. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, what about Ray having Force Heal, which was set up by that power was set up by Grogu in the Mandalorian, so they could give it to Ray. Basically. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, it's, it's another example of the Force being what the writer needs it to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Zori Bliss, what do you think of that character and uh, her uh, do everything medallion, free pass medallion? Who played that role? She sounded familiar. Terry Russell. That's what I thought. Okay. Another friend of J.J. Abrams, another okay. Felicity alumni. Yeah. I mean, she's cool. I mean, I didn't really mind it. <laughs> and I don't think you need to go there. I don't think you need to have that for you fucking mind wipe C-3PO. And when they do get to see stuff in the eyes, have to turn red, obviously, before yeah. you start speaking. Yeah. It's just too much on the nose. And that moment with C-3PO I thought like they immediately undo it like I thought it was cool like you finally give C-3PO a moment him being like I'm looking at my friends one last time mm -hmm. and he has to actually do something and sacrifice and become part of the story and then yeah. you completely undo it 10 minutes later and R2 is just like oh, beep boop beep you back I did like it little three foot high dude that jacked Babu his Freak. memory Babu yeah. Freak I was like that's probably my favorite <laughs> little thing in the movie yeah, is Babu funny. Freak yeah, I love him is, is him yeah that little character <laughs> is, is, is great it's a nice little inclusion uh, we already talked about Hux being the spy. What did you think of the reveal of Ray being a Palpatine? It's just one of those things where, you know, Ray's already powerful enough in this anyway. Right. You make her a damn Palpatine, and you have that scene where she was trying to, I think it was she was trying to stop that ship, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And Force, Force Lightning, Lightning comes out, and she kind of, uh, yeah. It's just too much. You make her too much. If we go back to the start of this, and, like, where obviously she was set up to have some kind of, like, lineage, like, who would you have rather her being? Like, I'm not. I'm not saying like I disagree with you. Like, but if did you have something in mind like back in the day, like who she should have been? If she's going to have a lineage, I I don't think it needs to be Skywalker. There's too many Skywalkers already running around. Yeah, I of the could she been a solo? <laughs> no. What I do mean, you got? Um, then it'd be like all oh, incest. -y. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, which isn't there kind of a level of incest to that? No, I'm thinking about because it's like. Ben Solo is the is the uh, grandson of Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, the daughter or the son of Han Solo and Leia Skywalker, and uh, Ray is a Palpatine. But didn't doesn't uh, doesn't didn't the Emperor say he kind of like infused his essence into uh, Shmi? Oh, isn't yeah. that kind of a little? That's a little incestuous. I don't know. Isn't if it? I don't know if I'm going too far with that. Think it or not. Um, what were we talking about? Who's Ray Actual's name? Oh, yeah, who's Ray's actual parent? Sorry, I went down the incest tree. <laughs> uh, That'll distract that anybody. That'll distract anybody. Um, I think given the the you would have to like again, I think do it and fix it in the figure it out in the series that you do and kind of like set up the backstory. Of the people that were still on the table, I guess maybe making a her a Kenobi. Oh. And maybe she just lives with her mother because I because being Kenobi can't leave protecting Luke on that planet or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, because in the Kenobi show, the, the little bit I watched, you do see him, like, kind of, like, have a little almost romantic thing with this lady, but he doesn't go through it because he's like, I, okay. I'm i celibate and I got to go watch this little boy in the desert. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so uh, I think maybe of the people that still in play make her Kenobi, perhaps, and, like, he, you know, he sent her with somebody, you know, Maybe that kind of what I set up in Space Montana. I talked about in the Force Awakens video that her caretaker kind of passed away at the beginning of it. Maybe they had a secret that she, they took Ray in for being Kenobi because he couldn't leave um, Tatooine. Tatooine because okay. he had to look after Luke. Something like that. That's not, not bad. A, not a Palpatine though. Yeah, not a Palpatine. Not a Palpatine. Uh, let's see. Where was I here? Uh, how was there any wreckage of that Death Star left? That's what. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a pretty big ass explosion. Yeah, it made was, even bigger in a special edition. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was it was atoms. How yeah. was there any wreckage of that yeah. left? Again, that wouldn't be in our in our film. Uh, with the circumstances, how did you feel about how they handled the death of Leia? I thought this is. I mean, even here, this is in the movie we got. This is probably about the only way I think they maybe could have done it. And there's not any kind of real jarring bad CGI for yeah. her than that portion. It's just, I think they took footage they had and like changed her outfits and stuff. But like, I thought it was it was handled about the best you could do. Yeah, like it was it was a pretty classy. You know, it was she got a decent send off. But again, no one got the, the send off that they really deserved of the original three. That's true. You know, Han and Sarah mostly dying on some bridge and falling into a chasm, and then. Luke just dying on a rock and then the last Jedi to a little, you know, very little pomp and circumstance. And then yeah. Le yeah. Leia just like dying with only R2 there with her. Yeah. <laughs> only just R2. Just R2. Beep, boop, boop. <laughs> um, <laughs> we already talked about Finn being a lost puppy for the entire film. Uh, what about, again, here's another fuck you to Ryan Johnson, Luke, like catching the lightsaber that Ray throws and being like, this is the most important thing you could ever fucking have. <laughs> here's another fuck you, yeah, Ryan Johnson. That's all that was basically. That's all it is. There's all, so much of that. Um, Luke's X-Wing is just fine, Todd. Yeah. How long has that thing been down there? Yeah. yeah. That's another one of those things like, okay, well, how do we get Ray and how do we fucking stick it to Ryan Johnson? Oh, that X-Wing that Luke could have took apparently because it was just fine in the last Jedi and took it to the battle on Krayt. Uh, uh, and he didn't like. Let's just say it is fine, and let's 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 Ray you know drive off with it. I do feel like that if that is still going to happen, I feel like Ray should have been the one that lifted that. Yeah, yeah, damn, I'll give you that. She's there. She's that far along. Uh, they mentioned the hold on uh, maneuver, and JJ glosses over that by saying, having somebody say, I think Finn say, that's a one in a million thing. We couldn't do that again. <laughs> Why? Right. Why? Just put put a droid in the ship. Yeah. And it's over. We yeah. win. Did it? Did it? Did it? You Come know. here, RD six seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you want to die for you want to die for king and country? RD six seven. That's how this trilogy is. <laughs> Our new droid uh, kamikaze army. You hear it go? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's exactly how it would go. That's how we fixed the, the oh, Rise of Skywalker right there. Uh, what do you think about the... I mean, we kind of mentioned we kind of both like the Force dyad angle from like The Last Jedi, but like, how do you feel about it being able to... Ray being able to pass Ben Solo a lightsaber, like physical object passing? So it was actually almost like a teleportation. I guess, yeah, in a way. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things where like a magician goes into a trunk and then you open it and he's not there. That's kind of what this is. <laughs> where did he go? Where did he go? Yeah, exactly. Like, on the, like in, the, <laughs> in the Last Crusade where he, young Indy gets in that little magician's trunk. It's like yeah, what yeah. this is. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, of the elements of this film that I, that I hate the least, that's probably one of them. Like, I'm right. all right, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, how how about Palpatine uh, not being able to control his own force lightning and melting his own face? Yeah, how's that even possible? He Come just, on, he just can't turn it off, Todd. Once it starts, <laughs> he can't, you just can't turn he it off. Cannot turn it off. And uh, I've got one I want to bring up, but um, I feel like just in the context of this movie, I think Ray should have died and Ben should have lived, and he could just kind of like you know live for her and like redeemed himself through his actions in her name, kind of thing. That's good. Actually. I, I feel like Ray should have been, but of course you can't kill you can't kill Ray. Dying. No, you can't do that. Uh, and what about Ray taking on the surname of Skywalker, just plucking it out of midair as she goes back to the uh, Lars farm, buries Luke and Leia's uh, lightsabers in the desert, and meets an old lady just there so she can ask her who you are. This is the one I struggle with and dwelt, dealt with or dwelt on the longest because I was like, how do I end this thing? Because I never liked this right here. Right. And when I, because I've only, this maybe is only like the second or third time I've watched this. This is this literally movie. the second time I've watched it. First and in the theater, then at home. The crazy thing to me is I had forgotten, but J.J. Abrams actually perfectly ended this fucking movie like five minutes before this happened. You know, where they're all back on that planet and they're all kind of, you know, getting back together. Mm. And you have Poe and Finn there together and they see Ray coming and they kind of all hug and embrace. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. That was a perfect ending, I think. That's all you need. I mean, based on this <laughs> film, yeah, that's about all you need. I mean, sure, you don't get Ray with that badass little flippy... Ooh, yeah, lightsaber she created. Spear-looking lightsaber, yeah. And I think 
you know, if I can dwell a little bit here, sure. I think looking back on this, maybe I was a little bit harsh on this ending because I mean, she's not a blood Skywalker. Right. She just didn't ever have a family. She never had anybody. You know, Luke and and uh, Leia were the closest, I guess, thing to you know maybe a mom and dad figure. Maybe she had, mm. and she just kind of you know, of course, you got to have that old lady there, like Ray. Ray who? <laughs> like Ray Skywalker. Yeah. Never heard of you. <laughs> and then she tr- trots off on her little camel. <laughs> yeah, she's private property. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, I get it, but I still don't like it. I got. I can say I think he ended it perfectly. You know, right there, we know when they all got back for the final battle. It's kind of like, you know, the rejoicing at the end of, of Jedi at Endor, just without all that special edition shit. Right. You don't really have the happy music, but. It was a good ending, I thought. <laughs> yeah, there's that moment where she's at Space Mardi Gras, you know, on that planet where that kid comes up to her and she, she's like, oh, C-3PO is translating. And she's like, well, she wants to know your name. Oh, yeah. Ray. And, well, she wants to know your surname because she's a nosy little bitch. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm just Ray. And mm-hmm. she's kind of sad about it. Mm-hmm. What What would you think if it was just like, I'm not saying this is better. Okay. But, like, what would you think about the end of, you know, she's like, Ray, you know, just just Ray, sad, react, sad emote. What about the ending? She looks at Luke, Luke she looks at it and like, you know, Ray, what? She's like, just Ray. And then, but she's happy about it. Yeah. Was that, is that better? She's happy with it. Yeah. Is that I mean, better I than that. being like, I'm Ray Skywalker? And yeah, I mean, like, I, do I dislike it? Yes. Like, again, was like you, was I probably too hard on it? Yeah. But like, it just, again, it seems just reactionary. It just seems like what we planned to do two movies ago, we can no longer do because yeah. whatever happened along the way, Ryan Johnson, like, <laughs> I, I hate to keep blaming him, but right. like, that's the pivot point. Like, The Force Awakens, like, that, it was teetering on a knife's edge, and how The Last Jedi went, it either rises or falls. And, that was the pivot point for this whole trilogy is The Last Jedi because you have one movie, you set up all this stuff, you bring in a director that's not on the same page and says, I don't like any of this. And then you bring back the original director who's like, well, I don't like what you don't like. And so he tries to fix that too. And so you just, that was the pivot point of all this of like where it went really wrong. Yeah. It went it went wrong originally because you didn't just plan all this stuff out and have everybody on the same page, but it re- went really wrong where someone kind of come in to throw out everything yeah. instead of, like I said, picking through that and finding yeah. what elements could work. You're like, no, let's back to formula. I'm going to, yeah. I'm dead set on making things <laughs> my way as yeah. much as possible. And we just go like scene to scene to scene to scene. It never stops. You never get a moment to breathe in the rise of Skywalker. It's just scene after scene after yeah. scene. Chewie's there. Oh, Chewie's dead. Oh, Chewie's back. Like, you know, that kind of stuff. Cause I actually, I kicked it out, but I had this whole thing where she went back to Jakku Maybe for some closure, maybe she's trying to find those pauper's graves where they're buried. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe I, f- I had maybe Luke's force ghost showing up, kind of talking to her, like, what are you doing here, Ray? You yeah. know? She's like, you know, I, I need this closure. I need to, you know, understand. I just, he's like, Ray, you've got a family. You've had a family all along. Right. Maybe at that point, you know, you see the Falcon kind of come in and kind of dissipate his force ghost. He's like, Ray, you know, come on, we're getting out of it's here. Like Finn and Poe. Yeah. I like that. Or, or it's Finn and Chewie. It could be Finn, Chewie, and Poe. Yeah. And they all fly off. I like that. <laughs> I like, I mean, I actually like that. Yeah. yeah I, I really, that keeps up with, uh, you know, her being a you know, nobody and her parents. Just, yeah. You know, which is an idea that I like from The Last Jedi is that you can be, you can be one with the force and not have to be a Skywalker. Yeah. Uh, the thing, Todd, lastly here, before we go into reviews, the thing that pisses me off the most about this film, um, the thing that really makes me viscerally upset okay. is right at the end and where Maz Kanata's like, Chewie, here's your fucking medal. Yeah. How many years too late? I hate that. <laughs> and it's not because I don't think Chewie deserved a medal. Mm. Obviously, he deserves a medal. Mm. Not 40 fucking years <laughs> later, just to, like, just to, like, fan service it. It's the ultimate, like, eh? We're yeah. giving Chewie Look a medal. We did here, Look hey? we did. Could you give us an extra point on this review? We're writing no. this wrong here, Fuck hey? you, JJ. Like, I hate it. It's so yeah. forced in. It is. It's so forced. It's so stupid, and it makes no sense. Like, if you had another me- why don't you just have another medal ceremony? Yeah. And everybody get a medal. Mm-hmm. This time, be like, Chewie, here you go. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, she's like, Chewie, we're sorry we found this in the box. We've had it for like 40 years. Yeah, Leia forgot to give it yeah. to you. Yeah. You're supposed to got this in 77, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> sorry. 
Yeah, I just I hate it. It's the Alice. thing I really hate the most about this film. Like I can, I oh all the rest of it. I just I, I I still hate, but this is like this is like completely like loathe entirely kind of thing. Okay, I had one too. Sure, and there may have been something that I missed that technically set this up. Okay, and if I'm wrong, I'll you know I'll be wrong. Sure. So when <laughs> so when Poe and his forces is having their assault. Mm-hmm. And you know Finn and that uh, that young lady they picked up on the planet with the Death Star crashed. Yeah, Jana, Jana. Yeah. So they actually land on the outside of that ship, and they're doing an assault on the outside of that ship, with the right? Horses? With the horses, right? I don't know if it was the horses from Last Jedi or just horses. No, it was just like some different okay. horses. I think those are called Fathiers or something. So they're on the outside of the ship mm-hmm. in outer space. Mm-hmm. Was there any, they, they, I didn't see any helmets. I didn't see any kind of breathing device. I think. Was there something set up that was keeping them alive? Um, Did the horses have it too? I think it's. Because <laughs> they should. I think it's. <laughs> I, think it's <laughs> I think it's stated that they can't. The, the ships can't take off uh, and navigate out Exegol while they're still in atmosphere. So they're technically saying they're still within the, the atmosphere. They're still the within planet. the atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Then I was wrong. Then <laughs> I will admit I'm wrong. Yeah. So that was a sticking point with me. But Yeah. I think they make the, I think I remember because I wrote down something in my phone about like this, you know, cause it's so dumb that the ships can't take off, like, mm-hmm. you know, and all this kind of stuff. But like, I think I wrote down, like, I remember that line about, oh, that's how they hand wave, like, that because they, they still say the ships can't take off okay. without the coordinates like you know they're still in the atmosphere basically because there was part of me was saying like surely to god they didn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i was wrong <laughs> should have never brought it up nah, it's fine no i mean it, like it's, it, there's a lot of dumb stuff in this film todd all right todd uh let's go ahead and into reviews give us your review score and final thoughts for star wars the rise of skywalker uh unfortunately for me uh, the rise of skywalker is at this point a band-aid on a gaping chest wound <laughs> uh the sequel trilogy's legacy unfortunately for me is just a lot of missed opportunities i think a lot of lackluster underserved fan service and i think characters that could have been much greater than they were written or directed I really do feel like that with uh, Poe, uh, with Finn, and with Ray. I don't think you could have had maybe something on equal ground with Han, Leia, and Luke. You know, those are icons. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they gave them their fair due. I think they tried to prop it back up on the Skywalker saga. You know, they tried to put too much of that in. You know, they had a decent enough first film, fucked herself over with a second film, Fucked herself over a third time with the third film by undoing the second part of a three-part trilogy. Yeah. It was just like, a, you know, some kind of half-ass, you know, cycle eating itself. <laughs> it's like a snake eating its own tail. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it's just, it's this is the worst of the bunch for me out of the three, and I give it a three, which is bad. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with everything. For me, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a four, which is subpar. I, basically, I, it's five, three, four for me. I still think... Uh, again, all of these films are, are competent, and they're all like visually look fantastic. Mm-hmm. This this film visually looks good as yeah, well, yeah. just like we talked about with the Last Jedi. Like they're all competently made, and they all are visually you know visually stunning, and they all have that look. But like, yeah, this is like a franchise that uh, you know a trilogy of films that like never. Never really had a chance from the start no. based on the decisions made by the leadership and the people involved in creating this and not planning it out, not mapping it out. And it's um it's a shame because I think there's some there's some there's some good actors here and good actresses and I think there's some seeds of ideas, but this this was a trilogy that was too scared to do its own thing. Exactly. It was never it was never comfortable enough to do its own thing to pay tribute to pay homage to the past but then forge its own new direction a new chapter and a new trilogy for star wars it was too reliant on the past and it was too scared to do anything new with it and all those things went into play with this being a completely lackluster mediocre bad sequel trilogy yeah and Again, the it was the start of the fall of the Star Wars franchise and property as a whole under Disney based on the choices that they've made mm-hmm. and the things they've done with the the franchise proper as that since they've had it. I mean, there's just been a lot of bad bad decisions and and um, and poor filmmaking and for and poor shows and all this kind of stuff. And it's just it's very sad that we get to the point that we're in our lives that we're like when we say like there's a new Star Wars something and you're not like. 
Yeah. I know. You're like, oh, fuck. Let me <laughs> let me watch this shit. Like, you know, that's that's where it's come to Star Wars. I mean, we just we just f- literally started, you know, just finished filming talking about the Acolyte, and it's the same thing. It's like, yeah. brum, brum, brum. you know, it's like that's yeah. what Star Wars is. It's like, you know, it's just, like you said, it's a snake eating its tail. And I'm hoping someday we can get some creators and some creative people behind these projects and and get something uh, worthy of the name Star Wars again, but right now, none, this this sequel trilogy uh, is not it. The new stuff we're getting is not it. Yeah. Uh, any heat for the Ray Solo film, Todd? No. Yeah, exactly. It's so. like if you came to me and you said, "If there's one property you want to put in the vault for a while, uh, Star Wars, yeah. right off the bat, it's Star Wars." You need to take a break. I mean, you need to take a pretty good extended break. But they can't because they can still print money they, off they, of they, it. I know that they spent so much money to acquire yeah. this and Indiana Jones and all, Marvel, all the other things that Disney has, and they just can't. They can't let it sit for long because they got too much money tied up in it, and there's money to be made. Yeah, I heard someone say uh, or something I read or something that says, you know, it's it's sad that all, the best Disney properties right now are the ones they purchased from Fox. Like we <laughs> right. just we just watched that uh, the second trailer for like Alien Romulus. It mm-hmm. looks like fan, like it can be fantastic, and mm-hmm. like all the stuff that like Disney's doing that's good right now. Like you know they redid you know the Predator franchise with Prey and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like all that they're good franchises right now and kingdom of the planet of the apes there's exactly, another one yeah um they're all fox properties former fox properties and that's that's just sad that you know whoever and then even marvel's suffering right now we haven't seen a really good 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 marvel film since endgame and like a lot of people say like after endgame you know i, I was watching a red letter media the other day it's like endgame was like after endgame everything like you know, we had COVID and everything else, but it seems like Endgame was like the last thing that was really any damn good, right? In a way, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it was like the 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 big blockbusters. Like you know, if it wasn't like a really like solid, tight character study film, like obviously stuff came along like the Batman and stuff that we love, mm-hmm. but like the big event film blockbusters. It's like it's coming out. We're there type thing. Yeah, yeah. It died after Endgame. Almost. Yeah, I can see that, and like that's kind of where we are. And this went a long way, I think, to uh, killing cinema. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, all right, Todd. Let's uh, let's call it a wrap for this episode. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch on social media. The information's on the bottom of the screen. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye guys. See you guys. <laughs>